There are over a dozen snail and slug types in the United States mainland. But this is the one that really hits the farmer. Derosaurus reticulardum, the gray field slug. Only an inch or two long, but you could have a half a million to the acre. And if you have, you've got trouble. A heavily infested field can eat several tons a month. So much, you'd think the slugs are sheeping the crop. And this is where it all starts, in small clusters of tiny eggs. Even the most conservative estimate says that every slug will lay 500 eggs in its two years of life. And that really doesn't mean every slug, because they are hermaphrodite. From autumn through early spring is the most active time for egg laying, although as long as the weather is reasonable, they will be laid throughout the year in moist cracks as deep as the slug can get. After she's laid her eggs, the adult slug moves on, and from there, it's every slug for itself. If the conditions are temperate, these eggs could hatch in two or three weeks, but in cold weather, they could take as long as two months. When they hatch, the surrounding soil must be damp, with a moisture content between 60 and 80 percent. But during incubation, they can survive up to 80 percent water loss. Even so, this egg doesn't look as though it's going to make it. It's just too hot and dry. But for everyone that doesn't make it, there are hundreds that do. At first, the tiny things browse on algae. This keeps them going for a while, but it's not long before they're off in search of a more filling meal. This youngster may have bitten off more than it could chew, but what about this one, cashing in on a grain of wheat? Because it can't burrow down into the earth for protection and moisture, the slug appreciates the modern farmer's tendency to adopt minimal cultivation techniques which provide plenty of safe nooks and crannies below the surface. Foraging for food, a slug might travel as much as 30 feet in one night. Moving by peristaltic muscle contractions, over a lubricating slime trail, which is secreted from the pedal gland. It's a style of locomotion that makes it virtually unstoppable in its search for food. This slug is about to tackle some young seedlings, the stage when it's at its most vulnerable. Take a closer look at its mouth. It's only got one jaw, shaped like a scythe. And down below, instead of a lower jaw, there's a radular. It's like a rasp, and it combines the functions of lower jaw, tongue, and teeth. Magnified 10,000 times, this is what the surface of the radular looks like, like rows of shark teeth. The teeth point backwards into the mouth, making it a very efficient destroyer of crops. There's usually time for two foraging trips between dusk and dawn. The slug fills up with food in the early evening and then slides off somewhere safe to digest it. Just before dawn, it comes out again to find more food so that it can fill up before going back to rest during the day. Foggy mornings and low intensity of sunlight let the slug feast continue into the day. Finding its way back home isn't a problem. A slug's sense of smell is advanced, and some scientists think that its honing skill has something to do with magnetic orientation. Those little black specks at the end of the upper antennae are the eyes, but they're only used to tell light from dark. Halfway down on the right-hand side, there's a hole for breathing. It's called a pneumostone, and it opens directly into the lung. 
It looks quite a delicate little thing, doesn't it? But don't let that fool you. The gray field slug is a cold-blooded creature that can survive and thrive in very tough conditions. Now for the strangest part of the slug story, its sex life. It begins in the conventional manner with the search for a partner. And for a slug, that means taking it to the slime trail where it can pick up all sorts of interesting information. Pheromones tell of mature slugs nearby and even which way they're going. When they meet up, they circle for a while, nose to tail, sizing each other up. Slugs are sometimes territorial and will show aggression towards other slugs. The thing to remember about this situation is that slugs are hermaphrodite. So what happens is a cross-fertilization rather than a normal copulation. From the genital pore at the side of the head, there's a cone-shaped protrusion called a sarcobellum. It's a tickling stick, really, used to stimulate the partner. This sort of thing goes on for some time, and then, at the height of the excitement, there is a sort of explosion in which both partners evert the whole of their genitalia and bring them into alignment with each other. Now the spermatophores or sperm sacs are exchanged so that each partner's eggs can be fertilized. About 2% of the population can be seen at night in normal copulation fertilization and there is new egg laying going on all the time. And that brings us right back to where we started. More slugs, more trouble for the farmers. We know that perennial crops are encouraging the buildup of slugs and the no-till plantings are also vulnerable. So what's to be done? Of course, the slug doesn't have things all its own way. The occasional goose or duck may stop a few, and the carabid beetle will do its bit. But neither the carabid beetle nor the goose will be as reliable and effective as baits or sprays. The effectiveness of slug and snail baits have been proven again and again. As long as good baiting practices are followed, slugs will be taking their slime trail away from your crop.